Bear on Bears fans, another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast coming your way. Pat the designer, former Chicago Bears fullback, and oh man, I we we was talking on the phone earlier, man. Very excited about this upcoming Carmel season, ladies and gentlemen. Very excited. Carmel head coach Jason McKee is in the building. We got a lot to get to on today's episode. The conversation continues around what the Chicago Bears need to do draft-wise. And are there some teams that we could find some interest in possibly trading up for this ninth overall pick? We'll talk about what J-Mac wants to do with the ninth overall pick in general, and uh, maybe I'll throw my mock draft up here, see his thoughts on that. All that more in today's episode of the Chicago Bears podcast. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. We didn't have you last week, J-Mac. You were out here on the college circuit, brother. How yeah, you been, yeah. man? How was how was the tours? Been good, man. It was spring break uh, for the kids at school, so I was able to take uh, seven of my players with me. Another coach went with me as well. And uh, we got invited to tour Duke uh, University. We also got invited to watch a North Carolina State practice. Oh, okay. So it was, a, and we also got some work in while we were down there as well. Uh, the kids went on the field and did some things. So it, it was good, man. It was good to, you know, Duke definitely showed us some great hospitality. The kids got to, you know, walk around campus, see what they had to offer in terms of academics, and we got to tour the football facility. A lot of good things going on there at Duke. Good coaching staff. Uh, a lot of, you know, they got some guys coming out in the draft. They had their pro day uh, while we were down there as well. We couldn't go to that because high school kids aren't allowed to go to the pro day because it's a professional event. But uh, it, it was cool, man. And then um, North Carolina State, yeah, it's weird, right? So many Football rules, rules get weird, dog. It's so it's weird. Like... It's so weird, Pat. It's so weird. But uh, then went to North Carolina State, um, got to watch their practice, tour their facilities as well. Uh, both of those schools were recruiting a couple of our kids. So, it was good, man. It was a good, productive spring break. It was, you know, the kids got a break, but we still put in some work. So it was a good time, man. Carolina's, North Carolina's a beautiful state. Yeah. I mean, listen, I, I've been down there a couple of times. I got some family down there. It's always fun to go down there. And just, yeah. to, you know, we, we was, it was a different time. We were looking at different things when we were down there. Lord, North Carolina was a phenomenal state when I was there. Yeah, you know I mean. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I wasn't at college. It was a phenomenal state, though. Shout out to North Carolina. Big love out there. I got a like, hey, lot of love for North Carolina. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, hey, no Zion Williamson over here, man. We're keeping it kosher. Zion oh, Williamson. calm down, Stephen A. <laughs> calm down, Stephen oh, A. We didn't man. need that. We didn't need that. Uh, oh, let's man. jump into this Bears conversation, man. A lot to get into on uh, on today's episode, um, we haven't had you on really to break down your thoughts on where the Bears are with this ninth overall pick. So why don't we start there? Because I think that this is is good to get everybody's perspective on this. And you're somebody who played on a team that had a focus on the trenches. Um, and we haven't seen that as much in our history pretty much. I mean, I think Kyle Long's the one line that we've drafted since since that. I mean, like that was that that had some some something to show there. I, sh- I should say because uh, it's it's been ugly, right? Darnell, right in there. We we're making a focus on the line, but what are your thoughts on the ninth overall pick right now? Where do you believe the Chicago Bears need to be looking at in this draft? And is there somebody on the board that if they're not there, you're moving out of that ninth pick? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I would be happy, and like you said, if the Bears went in the trenches on either side of the ball, offensive line, defensive line, edge, you know, edge defender, yeah. they, they call it now, no longer a DN, it's an edge. You know, we don't have a traditional DN, it's an edge. Uh, so I'd be happy with either one of those. And I'll start with the offensive side of the ball first, my breakdown. The reason being, right, and, you know, we the NFL is about scoring points, right? You want to put points on the board. The receivers, they have an advantage because now defensive backs, you can't even touch a receiver because it's pass interference, right? And, yes, we got Keenan Allen, and you look at the receiving court we have coming back. Like, if you look at it right now, you have DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, and Tyler Scott would be your top three. Yeah. You talk, we talked about Bayless, your favorite player. Bayless Jones would be in hey, the VJJ. Top. Colin Johnson, December Webster, Dante Pettis is back, right? So you say, yes, we need a receiver. And if four quarterbacks get taken off the board early, that opens up a lot more things for us in terms of the ninth pick, right? So 
if you're looking at it to be flashy, you know, I would say receiver. But, right, we know, and we saw this firsthand, and I saw it a lot being on the sideline, doesn't matter what you have, what kind of weapons you have, if you don't have guys to protect, especially at left tackle, you got a right tackle and down a right, but if you don't have that left tackle solidifying that quarterback's blind side or being able to make sure that you're right in protection, it doesn't matter who you have out there, Pat, running routes. The quarterback's not going to get the ball off. He's going to get hit in the head. And how many times did we see that with Justin Fields this year, right? And the worst thing we can do is, right, you bring a young quarterback in and we give him all the weapons, all the bells and whistles, all the flash, but we don't give him the protection that he needs to get that ball out and to be the phenomenal quarterback that we envision him being here in Chicago. So I would say offensive line. And I think, you know, if, if, if the board goes right and you look at it like this, right, there's some, a lot of teams need quarterbacks. You look at Denver, you look at the Vikings, you look at the Raiders, you look at, I mean, those are the teams that would have to trade up. Yeah. But you look at Washington commanders at two, you look at the Patriots at three, right? You look, I mean, the commanders, you got to get a quarterback. The Patriots, you got Jacoby Brissett coming back in Bailey's app. Uh, Denver, you've got Jared Stidham, Ben DiNucci, Vikings, you got Sam Darnold, Raiders, you got Aiden O'Connell, and then you brought in Gardner Minshew. Okay, so there, there's going to be a run on quarterbacks. There, those those teams may try to trade in, you know, and, and get the, get one of those quarterbacks or the highly coveted quarterback. So I think with that happening, that's the best case for the Bears, for us, because now a lot of things will fall on our lap. You know, we can get an offensive lineman, a tackle, your know, Joe Walt or – Talise Fu- I can't even pronounce his name. Hopefully, Talise- Fuaga. Fuaga, yeah. Talise Fuaga. Fuaga um, you know, Olu Fashanu, JC Latham. Like, if we have a chance to get bookends, right? And Braxton Jones, yes, he started a lot of games. He was a fifth round draft pick. But if we can get, right, uh, a, a premier player, a talent like we did with Darnell Wright, right? The 10th pick last year. We solidified that right tackle spot, right? Now we have Darnell Wright for a few more years. Would I have to worry about a new contract and stuff like that? We got him, continue to develop him. He's a rock on that right side. And if we have a chance now to get a rock, you know, a foundational piece on the left side of the offensive line, we've got those in solidified, right? And you look at Braxton Jones, you still have him. Well, guess what? Yeah, we need you need depth. So you let those two guys battle it out, you know, Braxton and the rookie that we bring in. But in this league, if you don't have depth at offensive line, your season is going down the drain. And we saw that last year. We saw the offensive line carousel that we had, Pat, every single week. We talked about it. Yeah. Who's in the lineup? Who's in the lineup? You know, who's in the lineup? And you cannot have enough good offensive linemen. There's a lot of guys walking around that's six, six plus over 300 pounds. But there's not a lot of guys walking around with those measurables that can withstand a bull rush. Right that can, you know, be able to be effective in pass protection. So I, I would say offensive line um, and then, if not, defensive line, right, edge defender, because when you look at it, right, and I went back and did some research and I looked at the sacks that we had, okay? Montez Sweat, he had six sacks with the Bears, but he had six and a half with the Commanders, okay? Yep. Now, if we can even go back, Pat, and we, look, we can look at before Montez joined the Bears, right? Justin Jones finished with four and a half sacks. Now, how many sacks did Justin Jones have before Montez Sweat showed up? <laughs> how many sacks did Demarcus Walker have before Montez Sweat showed up? Yeah. How many sacks did Yannick Ngakwe have before Montez Sweat showed up? Right. Yeah. And Dominique Robinson, a half a sack. Whether Montez Sweat showed up, I forgot, up he, was on the, I forgot he was on the team. Are we done with that experiment? Is that one done? Right. Is that one over with trying to turn a converted quarterback into like a defensive? Is are we done with that? Man, you you see what I'm saying? So it's like, hey, you know what? Like, I mean, Montez Sweat, he he took the defense to a whole new level. We saw the takeaways, like, I mean, we can even argue like Jalen Johnson, he got better when Montez Sweat came, right? He got better because he's catching them picks, but the picks became ready available because that quarterback's timing was disrupted because of the Montez Sweat uh, effect. So you know, I look at it like this. If we get a chance to, to get a book in or uh, another edge uh, rusher that could, you know, go out there and, and, and put together a double digit sack season or give us, you know, the ability to be able to affect the quarterback opposite Montez Sweat, I'd be fine going in that direction as well. Yeah, I think that's there's a lot of people who and and listen, I, I'll show my I mean, I can show it now. Right. I, I'll show the mock draft. Yeah, this so. is kind of how I did it. 
This is okay. how I wanted my mock to go. And this is how it fell to me, right? Joe Walsh there at nine. Mm -hmm. I took Joe Walsh. I feel like I can't move to that. I don't know if you've addressed the center position or not. I like Ryan Bates. Uh, but a lot of people had a problem with me trading two future seconds for the, the first pick of the second round this year. That's Jackson Powers Johnson. I take him. Everybody's like, oh, Pat, oh, my goodness, you're so in love with Jackson Powers Johnson. How can you be in love with Jackson Powers Johnson? Because we had a quarterback on the field last year, no matter what you think about the young man's play when the ball was finally in his hands, that had to basically be a shortstop trying to make sure that the ball didn't get to the outfield every time because the center couldn't figure out whether he was supposed to snap or block. I get it. We got Ryan Bates. I get it. We've got Coleman Shelton. Yes, those are two ways to address that. But are those ways to address it in the long term? I feel like you have to go trenches here. But a lot of people, and I, I this is, I said this, this is the Chicago Bears podcast mock draft. So we will adjust it based on what people have said. A lot of people don't like taking the big boys there. They say you've got good enough on the line already. The lines issues, right? A lot of that blame people were putting on the quarterback uh, mm. last year, right? Not getting the ball out quick enough, not throwing the ball quick enough. You mm. have to take another weapon. Do you feel like if you get one of those Malik neighbors is there or Roma Dunze is there that you need to prioritize that over going and getting one of those left tackles? Because if Joe Alt's there, I think that's a no-brainer, but I don't believe he'll be there. If it's Olu Fashanu, I might say, okay, I can see going receiver over there at that point. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I look at it like this, right? When you look at the receiver standpoint, right? Yes, there we have a need there as well because, like I talked about, when you get past Keaton Allen, you got Tyler Scott, you got yep. Bayless Jones, you got uh, Colin Johnson, you brought back Dante Pettis, you got Nassimba Webster, guys who you're not going to hang your hat on, you know, guys you hope develop. Uh, but, you know, you, you hope Tyler Scott takes the next step. But if you have an opportunity, like you said, to grab one of these, you know, top tier receivers that could fall at number nine, do you make that happen? Now, here's the thing, right? I look at the wide receiver depth in this draft, a lot of receiver depth in this draft. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not saying, you know, you wait with you wait as long as the guys who I'm going to mention right now to try to find your Puka Nakua, fifth round draft pick, Nico yeah. Collins, a third round draft pick. Amon Ross St. Brown, a fourth round draft pick. Tyreek Hill is a fifth round draft pick. Now, there's only, like I mentioned, all those guys are top 10 receivers in this league. They're, they're one of a kind, you know, being picked late in, the, in those later rounds like they were, you know, they're diamonds in the rough. And I'm not saying you're going to find that guy, but there's a possibility. So if I have an opportunity, you know, I have an opportunity to shore up my offensive line, I'm going to shore that up because the, the one thing that I don't want to do is, and you've seen this with a lot of quarterbacks that have had that have been drafted high and they failed. Right. They failed because they're getting hit. They're getting yeah. crushed. I mean, look at look at uh, David Carr, who was a number one pick way back in the day. Right. Uh, he didn't have a chance. Like he had. So I swear he was good. I swear he could. Play. He was he was. I mean, people talked about him as being a generational challenge, you know, a bona fide number one guy that was going to just, you know, take the NFL, NFL by storm. But guess what? They didn't have no offensive line in front of him. And he got killed. Like, he got beat out the league. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so I look at it from that standpoint. The best thing I can do for my, you know, new quarterback is I want him comfortable in the pocket so that way he can do what he does. He can deliver. He can dissect defenses. And he can do what we drafted him to do. Or at least give him the chance to be successful. I feel like if we don't address the offensive line, then, you know, yeah, we've surrounded him with pieces, but guess what? He won't be able to distribute that football to the pieces that we have around him. So, and I just feel like you can still get receivers later in the draft. You know, you, you still got, I mean, we don't have a lot of draft picks, but, um, you know. Listen, they're, they're, I, they're, let's they're let's also me. take this into account as well. Ryan Poles ain't done a great job at receiver. If we can knock him on anything, he has not done a great job finding receivers, right? I believe... Yeah. I'm in rise two years ago, so we took Valus, right? When we took Valus, they took Amon Ra, and we took Valus in the third. So I I can see kind of the the fear of some Bears fans, and and at this point, I'm speaking for the people who responded to the poll on Twitter, where you say if you get to the fifth round, 
he's just going to find a gym magically out of here. He couldn't find it in the third round when there were guys on the boards that legitimately were the gym. Yeah. I'm not saying he is, but I'm saying there's, there's depth in this yeah. draft, the receiver, you know, my thing is hell. It don't matter who you have a receiver. If that quarterback doesn't have time to distribute a ball to them, you know right. what I'm saying? So, and that's something that's been overlooked. Like, yeah, we, we took down our right in the right. first round, but that was the first time that we actually took an offensive lineman in the first round in a long time. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You mentioned Kyle Long. Before Kyle Long, I played with a guy named Chris Williams. You know what I mean? It was, it was like you, you. It's, it's just, it's just a premium position. If I have an opportunity to bring in a tackle who's going to be a foundational piece of my franchise, especially a left tackle, the premier offensive line spot, I've got to make that decision. You know, yeah. I've got to make that decision. And if I'm not going to go there, well, then you need to go to the other side of the ball, right? The foundational piece of your defense is getting pressure with the front four. We can only get pressure with with one side of that defense right now, right? And I hear people talking about, oh, what about three technique and this? Well, we, we, we drafted two guys last year to, to man that three technique position. You know, we drafted uh, Dexter and Pickens. You know, we've got to develop those guys. Like, yeah. they're not going to – like, it's rarely that you're going to have a rookie come in and just get 10 sacks. Some teams had that luxury. We didn't. It's about development. So we have two guys that can man that position. Now it's time, you know, to address that, that other that other end spot opposite Montez Sweat if we're not going to go offensive line. Because, hell, if we can't get pressure, in which we've seen the first half of the season, we couldn't get pressure what was happening. Teams were carving up our defense like a Thanksgiving turkey. Like, a, come on, man, come on. Turducken, a, a turducken in the man, football. They were, even, they were ripping the, le the legs off the turducken, man. The chef was carving up the where. How do you want to describe it? We were getting dissected on defense because that quarterback was back there moonlighting in the pocket, right? And it wasn't just the the good quarterbacks in the league. It was every quarterback that we faced until we got Montez Sweat that turned the tides of that defense because. He was getting pressure on the quarterback. The other argument that we've seen uh, um, for, since the mock draft has come out, because I went heavy offensive line, If for those of you who couldn't see at home, um, who aren't watching on YouTube, I should say, if you're listening on the podcast side, I went Joe Alt 9. Uh, I don't know if Joe Alt will be there at 9, but if he's there, grab him. And uh, I, I traded back into the second round for Jackson Powers Johnson, who everybody's like, oh, this is Pat's man crush right now. Yeah, starting center, 10 years, yeah, man crush. Uh, the debate, to the the other debate that I saw uh, on top of it was, well, Ryan Poles has addressed that enough this offseason. He addressed the center position by going and getting Ryan Bates and Coleman Shelton. He's addressed offensive line depth this offseason. Do you need to waste that draft capital in the draft when you've done that to go out and get veteran players who already can do that at the NFL level? Again, pointing towards we need to go out and get the wide receiver if the wide receiver is available or you need to go out and I've seen this argument as well go out and get the edge rusher right if Dallas Turner is there who I also don't think will be there but uh yeah. if Jared Verse is there right that's where you make the move yeah I, and I think you know I know we're going to talk about this as well I, I like the exercise that Ryan Poe is going to do with his 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 scouting department yeah. right talking about breaking up three teams you have the team that wants the wide receiver They've got to bring factual evidence on why they pick, why they want the receiver and how it's going to impact, you know, the roster or the organization, you know, short term and long term. Uh, he's going to have a group that's going to talk about the defensive end or the edge that they want to draft and why, you know, he, he'll help them long term. And then it'll be offensive line group. So, you know, I like that because, you know, it gives it gives an opportunity for these guys or these groups to speak their mind. You know, there's a lot of times in which the GM, you know, he's going to have the final say. And, and you know, it's human nature. There's scouts, you know, in that meeting room and they say, uh, uh, the GM saying, yeah, we're going to draft this quarterback at this, at the number one pick. And, yeah. and then there's some guy saying, oh, we shouldn't draft this guy. Like, you know what I mean? So <laughs> <laughs> it's just human nature, Pat. So it's good that he's going to hear, you know, arguments from those three groups and, and they're all going to plead their case. And, and I think it's good. It's going to help further the evaluation and the decision that Ryan Poses is going to have to make at number nine. Yeah, I, I love the fact that he's that Ryan Poles is okay with parody. Again, we come from Ryan Pace, who was like, "I'm gonna sneak into the room and I'm gonna make the decision." Yeah, you know I mean, like right, I'm, right. I'm 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 Batman and down the flagpole here into uh, UNC's practice, and and I found Mitch Trubisky and I'm bringing him home with me. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. I mean, like so. Yeah. I love the fact that Ryan Poles is okay with having different conversations in the room. I love the fact that he's not so I'm the ball. I think that's been the downfall 
of the Cowboys, right? How many times have we seen Jerry Jones just beat the table and say, I own the team, you do what I say? Yeah. I, right? Like, All the, the time. Uh, uh, All the time. Who was the GM at the time? I, maybe it's the same GM. I don't even rem- I don't even know. Um, but they did not want to pay Ezekiel Elliott. Yeah, like they they were like that would be the dumbest thing that you can do. You want to pay Ezekiel Elliott how much money? And Jerry Jones came in and beat the table and was like, pay Ezekiel Elliott his money. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was just like, oh, he can't play football anymore. Well, yeah, you know, we paid him his money. Yeah, you know I mean, like so I I think that when you see the the opposite side of it, where it's like. This is, I'm the guy in charge. I've got the biggest stick in this room. I said stick, calm down, Neo. I've got the biggest stick in this room right now. Um, and nobody can tell me what I want to do versus now we see Ryan Poles who's like, hey, listen, um, let's let's all get our opinions in here. Let's all talk about what's going on in here. Let's all figure out how to make the Chicago Bears better. I think that makes a big difference in um, the process and and the fact that he's willing to do that and almost like, Almost like just to say, give me your best argument for this. Yeah. And if I'm convinced by it, it may sway the decision that I'm willing to have or the opinion that I currently have. Like the yeah. fact that he's on board with something like that, it doesn't mean it's going to work out every time, but it does mean you're going to hear every argument that's the best argument for why this player makes the Chicago Bears great. Yeah, and, and I'm glad that he's humble enough to do that, right? Yeah. And, and and some of these, and I don't know these gyms, but I and I and you know, there's I'm pretty sure there's some gyms that's gonna say, you know what, it's my pick. It's my pick regardless, you know. And you know, he may listen to his staff or his personnel scouting department, but at the end of the day, it's just gonna be his pick. And yeah, it's gonna be Ryan Poe's pick, but it's good that he's going to allow his guys to work and present every side of the coin. The reasoning, the factual evidence, short term, long term, how it's going to be beneficial to this football team. Because one thing we do know is Ryan Post has to get it right. I mean, yeah. there's no way that you can you can sit here and say, oh, he didn't have an opportunity to get it right. When you look at what he was able to do last year, had a number one pick in which he finessed that and did some great things with. And then this year you got the number one pick again and a number nine pick. So, you know, he has to make it right. He has to be able to 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 make sure that this roster is is a roster that can get us into the playoffs. He has to make sure that this roster is a roster that can sustain injury and have adequate backups to come in and still enable this team to play at an elite level. That's his job. So he has to get it right. Regardless of how many picks he has this year, you have two top 10 picks that you have to get right. So, you know, I'm glad he's exhausting every different avenue, every situation, uh, listening to every, you know, scouting uh, you know, scouting uh, department that he has in that meeting room, you know, not leaving any stone unturned when he's going to make this decision. So it's going to be interesting to see the arguments that that come out. I wish we could be in that room. You know, I wish we, I wish we could be in that room and listen uh, to some of these things that these different teams is going to present to him. And like you said, Pat, hey, at the end of the day, if, if there's a convincing argument that may fall in line with what he is thinking, well, then, hey, that's just going to further solidify his decision. Is there a move at nine that the Bears could make that you feel? Because I'm going to be honest with you, right? Mm-hmm. Caleb Williams, one. Oh, yeah. Dallas Turner, nine. Happy. Joe Alt, nine. Happy. Roma Dunze, nine. Happy. Uh, Malik Neighbors, nine. Happy. Right. Um, uh, like, is there a move at nine where you would go? I, I think even some of the reaches are I'd, I'd be okay with, right? Is there a move at nine where you'd go, I wish you hadn't have done that? I wish you hadn't have made that move. I wish you had changed something or, or gone about this a different way where you're like, no, nah, that's a missed pick right there. Not that the player yeah. will be bad, but that you could have gotten something else in a better position. Yeah, I think it's just it, – it's so tough. It, it's just, you know, how how the draft is going to fall. Like, if, if, these, if these quarterbacks go one through four and you look at the Chargers, right, the Chargers are sitting at five – that's really when the draft starts. You know what I'm saying? Like like Harbaugh said, um, he said, you know, for the Chargers, they're at five. Those four quarterbacks go one, two, three, four. They got their pick of the draft because they don't need a quarterback. You see what I'm saying? So he said it's like they're getting the first pick. So for the Bears, picking at nine. Man, like, you know exactly what Jim finna try to do, boy. That boy about <laughs> to be like, hey, what if we trade this Herbert guy? <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't JJ know. J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. I, I, but the thing is here, like like you said, I'm I'm happy if they get Alt, Fashanu, uh, 
Talise Fuaga. I'm happy if they get a, a Turner, a verse, lay to lie to. I'm happy with that as well. You know what I mean? Um, and, and at the end of the day, like as much as I'm, I'm, I'm banging my fists on the table talking about offense and defensive line, hell, if they happen to get a neighbors or an Odunze, I'm, I'm happy with that too, because there's another productive weapon on this team. You know, I'm just a big believer in, you know, building things the right way. You build it from the line and you build it out. Right. And at the same time, right, everybody wants that Ferrari, right? That Ferrari, they want it to look good. Everybody wants to have the new flashy toy receiver, right? But at the end of the day, what's under the hood? What's yeah. what, what's making this thing go, right? What's protecting this car? What's under the hood? What's making this offense run, right? It's that offensive line. That's the premium fuel that you got to put on your roster in order for that offense to run, in order for that scheme to be executed. And if you're not doing that, yeah, I can have that Ferrari. It looks good on the outside. Hey, Odunze looks good out there, split out wide, opposite DJ Moore, or, or you know, in the slot or wherever they're going to play him. Malik Neighbors the same way. But at the same time, if I don't have that protection, if I don't have an offensive lineman, or if I don't have that left tackle position solidified, well, guess yeah. what? Caleb's running for his life, and he's not going to be able to distribute that football to that beautiful new shiny receiver we got out there on the outside. But I think that's that's what a lot of the questions are on, right? What did you address in the offseason then, right? A lot of the offensive linemen that we got, if you feel like you need to go mm -hmm. out, and, and not to say, I think Braxton to me has to be upgraded. I don't care what anybody says. Like, mm -hmm. that's the left tackle position needs to be upgraded. If, you, if Joe Walt's there, take Joe Walt. Like, I'm sorry. Like, Joe Walt is going to be better than Braxton Jones is after three years in the NFL, probably day one of stepping in. Braxton has become an amazing piece from being a fifth round pick to what he's developed into at the NFL level. But you don't look on that left side and go, perfect. Here's the thing, too. Right. You made a good point, Pat, right? Yes, we addressed it in the offseason. We addressed it. We brought in these guys, right? Those guys, right? Are they band-aids, right? Trying to cover mm -hmm. a wound that needs to be stitched. That's the band -aids difference. Band-aids on a gunshot wound. That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. the difference. You can know you say I mean? that on YouTube? I don't know if you can say that on YouTube. I don't know either. That's why yeah. I, I don't know. <laughs> but, that's, but that's what it is, Pat. Like, like that's what it is. Like, we brought in a lot of guys last year. We we brought in a lot of free agent offensive linemen last year, right? But we yeah. didn't bring in, right, we didn't bring in the, the, the a key piece that we need to really solidify a spot. We brought in it at right tackle. But at left tackle, there's still a question. It's like it was questions at quarterback. Well, there was, there's been questions at left tackle the whole time. Yes, Braxton has been a pleasant, ple, uh, pleasant surprise being yes. a fifth-round pick and being a starter, right? They didn't envision that when they drafted Braxton Jones. Imagine if Braxton Jones didn't pan out to be a, a, a quality starting left tackle. Well, guess what? I mean, you think Justin was running for his life this year. Guess what? If Braxton – if they didn't – Draft Braxton Jones and get lucky to where they could say he's a starter. Yeah. Man, we'd be in bad shape right now, real bad shape. So, oh, yeah. you know, I just think you have to if you have an opportunity, right? And and these these tackles, they still got to pan out. We don't know. It's all projections and and based off potential. But at the end of the day, if I have the opportunity to bring in a diff a true difference maker like I did last year when I brought in Darnell Wright, and I got an opportunity to bring in a difference maker on the offensive line. At left tackle, now I have book ta book in tackles yeah. that I'm going to have for a few years because they're young. Now I can concentrate on other pieces. But one thing I know is that my quarterback is going to be protected. Is is Braxton Jones kind of like James Daniels? James Daniel? James Daniels? One of them. Uh, <laughs> I don't remember if the S was on there or not. But is he kind of like that? Where like he was a piece that you looked at and you were like solid. We don't have to worry about it, but if we can get better there, we get better there. And we moved on from James Daniels for Tevin Jenkins, basically. Well, and, like this. Yeah, I mean, like, you're, you're kind of like, all right, Tevin's beat up, James at least plays, but, like, the difference in talent is vast. Well, you got rid of Charles Leno. So Charles Leno's another good name, yeah. Charles Leno was the tackle. Yeah. You, you got rid of Charles Leno, and yeah, like he wasn't a high draft pick, but what was Charles Leno? He was available. Yeah. Right? He was consistent in terms of he was there. <laughs> you knew he was going to be in the lineup. I knew who my left tackle was. You know what I'm saying? Like, I knew who my left tackle was. You know what I mean? Was he the best left tackle in the league? No. no. But, he was, but he was up there. He wasn't a bum. You know what I'm saying? Like, he wasn't no bum. 
and he was consistently available. He was consistently in the lineup. What and, a bar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, Charles Leno available. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for real, like that's what it's about. You know, that's yeah. what it's about, man. Like it's Best ability is availability. You got to be available, man. Like how many – and for, for an offensive coordinator, an offensive line coach, and I feel for – for Chris Morgan, who's a hell of an offensive line coach. That's why he was, he was retained. But can you imagine what he went through last year, right? You have your base protections, but him having to tinker it and tailor it because he didn't know how, how you know, who was going to be in the lineup. You know, Braxton Jones out of the lineup. You know, Tevin Jenkins out of the lineup. Nate, De- Nate Davis, you know, never in the lineup. Uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. So, that's it, it's tough, man. But if I can get a tackle who's going to start the who who has the ability or possibility to start the whole season, to, like like John O'Reilly Wright did, I'm not saying that's going to happen because yeah. I can't envision what's going to happen with these young tackles. But if I have an opportunity to bring in a talent like a Darnell Wright Wright and put that out beside Darnell Wright, Wright, and now I've got my quarterback solidified on both ends, I mean that that's what you're looking for. And you have an opportunity to do that, depending on how this draft falls with all these quarterbacks, you know, in the limelight at the forefront and all these teams needing quarterbacks. And yes, I'm going to be the first team that has the pick at quarterback. So I'm good there, but I'm still in a position to get a piece on the offensive line that I need. Man, you, you, I mean, you can't beat that. I mean, we're set up right now. Yeah. And, and I think that's the thing, right? Like when, when I talk about a move being made at nine, that I, I can't even envision a move being made at nine that I'd be upset about right now. Yeah. Right. Like, there's names that I may not be as keyed in on, but I, uh, um, who's the young man? Uh, he's basically the fourth receiver. Brian Thomas, right? Yeah, Brian uh, Thomas. You Brian Thomas is basically the fourth receiver out uh, in, in, the, uh, dra- in the draft, right? But Brian Thomas, if the Bears took him at nine, a lot of people would be like, what are you doing? You go, oh, my God, how did you take right. him at nine? But Brian Thomas is a really, really good receiver. He's somebody who is a top, is a first-round pick, right? He'll end up going later in the first round, but he's a first-round pick. On Mm -hmm. top of that, he gets to come into a team with DJ Moore and Keenan Allen where he gets to be the third guy, figure out how the heck the speed of the NFL works, figure out how the heck he needs to play the receiver position for his game to work best, Figure and and now you have a long term answer, not just Keenan Allen. Who right. listen, I love Keenan Allen. I think he's going to be here for a couple of years uh, um, and make an impact there. Mm-hmm. But you telling me having three impact guys wouldn't be good? Like I, I just I feel like there are so many options here where you can go a different direction and I can see how it can be a massive positive in the long run. Now, what I say, maybe you could have moved back and gotten more for that. Yeah. But I also don't know what Ryan Poles knows sitting in that draft room. I don't know what he knows about teams that are trying to trade up, right? You might have Seattle sitting there going, Hey, listen, we, we're not going to get to one of these quarterbacks this year, but you know what? We might be able to get up there and get Brian Thomas. We might be able to, and and we think some teams are going to take them. We need to trade up. Right, like that's that's kind of how a lot of this stuff goes. Where even last year, you think about Jalen Carter, the Bears still had their shot. Jalen Carter was supposed to be the number one overall pick. Yeah, and and this is the thing too. When you look at it, I'm glad you brought that up. You know, you look at Brian Thomas. You talked about a guy who's has been mentioned with the Malik neighbors, the Odunza, is and the Marvin Harrison Juniors, right? But he's a guy opposite Malik neighbors that was very productive. You know, he's 6'4", 205, you know, yeah. guy that can, you know, play. He, he's a first round. He has a first round grade. So a guy that can come in and really help this roster. And guess what? You bring him in, you know, on, on with your receiving court that you have right now. I mean, it's is he already the, the third best receiver on your roster with what you have coming back? I, I don't think that's a question. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and you look at I mean, there's another guy, too, I'm looking at right now um, from Texas. Adon- I can't pronounce his name. Adonai Mitchell who's another 6'4 receiver. So you're looking at receivers who have a big catch radius. They're fast, athletic. They yeah. can come in and help you, you know, help aid in the production or aid in the development of your quarterback. So, you know, if if they were to go there at nine and, I mean, a Malik Neighbors or Odunze they was available and they took, you know, one of those guys over, you know, the guys that we've been hearing about through mock drafts and, you know, the, their names have been thrown out. Yeah, we may say, well, damn, why didn't they take Odunze? But, hey, 
you know, based on the scouting department, what they've seen throughout film and the workouts, they may like, you know, what this receiver can do in their scheme better than, you know, one of the name guys that we've heard over and over again throughout this draft process. By the way, 433 for Brian Thomas. The people were wondering you know, if it was just Paul. Big and fast. <laughs> you know what I mean? Big and fast. Like you, I mean, that's that's and runs with a purpose. And yeah. runs with a purpose. You know what I mean? Like, and, and I think listen, if we get if we find a way to get second round picks and we go get Xavier Worthy in the second round, love it. Right. Like, I think yeah. that's the part about this draft where I, I'm I'm trying to remember um and EO, maybe you could put it in the chat. I think they were just on with Waddle and Sylvie. I can't remember who it was, but they were talking about right. Everybody's really excited about the first four rounds of this draft. It's loaded. Yeah. And then after that, things kind of start to fall off. After that, things kind of start to, you know, they they start to, all right, now we're in the slim pickings area. Um, yeah. uh, Mina Kimes was yeah. on saying that. Appreciate that, EO. Um, that the top four picks of this draft are the top four rounds. Guess where we got our draft capital at? Je guess where a lot of our focus is at, right? It would almost seem like, not to say there's not going to be fifth round picks and sixth round picks that hit this year, but that this is a good year to really be focused in more on your first four rounds of the draft. So yeah. it, it's why I say, right, like when I throw out the in polls we trust, when I when I throw out the – and it doesn't mean we can't question. For some reason, people are just like, you trust them, don't you? Like, yes, I also can question some of these moves. But I don't see a scenario right now where I feel like the Bears can misstep. Especially yeah. right now, right? You've got a first, you've got two firsts, a third, and a fourth. If they don't do anything and they take four players this year, I see four rounds worth of players where I go, could have been a good get. Yeah. Could have been a solid get there. And and here and the reality is, right? And we see this every year, and we'll see it this year. Okay. The top guys in this draft, right? We know they're not all gonna pan out. Some guys are gonna pan out and live to the potential and live to the forecast and uh, of what type of pro they should be. But like you say, when you say the draft's going to fall off after the fourth round or fifth round or whatever, it may fall off in terms of what we see right now in terms of potential and what's out there. But at the end of the day, there's going to be a player in these later rounds that's going to end up being one of the better players in this draft. It happens every year. It happens every year. We saw, Like I said before, when you know I brought up Puka Nakua, fifth round draft pick, Fifth round draft pick, and I'm not saying like it's you hit a diamond in the rough, but there is a player or two or three or whatever that's out there who's not talked about right now, who's gonna gonna get an opportunity to go to the right scheme, who's gonna get the right fit, go to the right team, who's really talented, who's gonna flourish, and you know I hope that for the Bears we get one of those players because that player can end up being the best player that you drafted that year. And he wasn't one of the guys that you drafted in the first second or with the first pick, the ninth pick, you know what I mean? Like that's why you've got to, your, your, your scouts, they've got to be on point. They've got to be thorough in their evaluations. Like they got to have their homework done because you're going to have to count some of these guys, these undrafted guys or these lower end guys that are, that are drafted. They're going to make your team and they're going to be called upon to contribute. And you're going to count on them just as if they were a first or second round draft pick. So, you know, you've got it. That's why the scouting departments are at every pro day. You know, they're going to the smallest school that you never heard of. They're going to the biggest school, but they're not leaving no stone unturned in terms of evaluation because they know there's going to be a point in the season in which this individual is going to be a starter or our playoff. Our playoff hopes is going to uh, is going to depend upon this guy playing well this game who wasn't a first, second or third round draft pick. Right. No, 100 percent. I'm with you there. Um Here's another question that I got for you regarding this ninth overall pick here. And this is will be this will be our road to the draft brought to you by Toyota. Toyota, let's go places, ladies and gentlemen. Um, is there a team that you see right now that sits behind the Bears that you believe is one of the better candidates to trade up? Uh PFF put out, uh, uh mm -hmm. Brad Spielberg uh, Brad Spielberger put out um that the Saints might be in on Olufashano at nine. Um, and that would mean that they would make a trade with the Bears there. I believe, let me see if I could pull this up here real quick. Mm -hmm. um, it's just to get what the trade was here. It was the Bears would trade the ninth overall pick, the 75th overall pick to the Saints, and they would be able to get the 14th overall pick, 
45th overall pick. So moving into that second round and then the 168th overall pick. Interesting number on that pick because in 2022, that was Braxton Jones. So you can get talent in that round there. Is there a team that you see? I thought that was an interesting trade, but is there a team that you see um, where you could see somebody maybe trade up and you'd be like, all right, let's let's make that move? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I, it's just, you know, I look at, like I talked about before, the teams I see trading up because of the quarterback need. And yeah. then I look at the top four quarterbacks that are, you know, could possibly go one through four right out the gate. I mean, look at teams that need quarterbacks. Like I said, Denver, the Vikings, the Raiders, like yeah. those guys need, they need quarterbacks. And, you know, maybe, and, and another wild card we don't know is the Giants. The Giants, you know, are they done with Daniel Jones? You know, is, is a team. yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. There's a, there's a wild card. So that's what, four teams. You got the Giants at six, Dem, uh, the Vikings at 11, Denver's at 12, and the Raiders are at 13. Well, where did you, where do you think the fourth quarterback, because you said four quarterbacks come off top 10, right? at, Yeah, I'm looking at, so if these teams fall in love with J.J. McCarthy, right? Okay. You've got Caleb. Yeah. You've got uh, Daniels. Yep. You've got May, and now you've got McCarthy. You know what I mean? So and where does McCarthy go? Does he get past the Giants? Yeah, does he get past the Giants? Do the Vikings trade up? They love McCarthy and get him? Or does Sean Payton love J.J. McCarthy? Does he move up and, and try to bring him in Denver? Because he's right now he's looking at the, the possibility of having Jared Stidham and Ben DiNucci out there at OTAs. <laughs> Are you not a DiNucci guy? You're not big on DiNucci. And, and I'm not saying those guys are bad. I'm just saying. No, the yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. The situation, it's okay. Well, let me talk about the situation. It's trash juice right now in terms of the quarterback situation for Sean Payton. Jay Mack, nobody's Payton. slandering you for saying right. Ben DiNucci's yeah. probably not going to pan out in the NFL. Yeah, I'm not gonna, hey, look, look, I can't play quarterback. I cannot throw the ball. I can throw the ball. I don't know where the hell it's going to go. You know what I mean? And – Jared Stidham, you guys are in the NFL. You're playing quarterback. Ben DiNucci in the NFL playing quarterback. Yeah. But I'm just saying, Sean Payton, your quarterback situation, not the players, the situation is trash juice. It ain't trash. It's the juice at the bottom of the trash. It's worse <laughs> than trash. It's trash juice. It's just, it's just the the the, the buildup there that every now and then you got to take man. the holes and just oh, be like, and hey, you is anybody it? looking? Let me pour this down the sewer drain real quick. <laughs> that trash juice stinks when you're like, man, what is that smell? Oh, it's the trash juice. Like, oh. you, gotta, you know, so I, I don't know, man. I think, you know, like you said, that could be interesting if the Bears, if there's a team that'll trade up at nine and, you know, get a player that they want, the Bears get more, the more picks, but I just feel like it's got to be like the. I don't want them to trade down too far to where they can't get right. that impact player, that impact tackle, that impact edge, or that impact receiver. There's a lot. There's a. I mean, I, there's a lot more receivers in this draft, in my opinion, than it is tackles or edge or uh, you know edge edge defenders. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. you 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 have to be able to get two impact players. I feel like in this first round, we know the quarterbacks won, but you've got to get a, I think another starter whether it's at nine or anywhere else in this first round, you've got to make sure that you're getting two impact players that could be cornerstones of your organization for a long time. No, I, I agree with you there. I Let me ask you this. This is this is tough because you had battles with these guys, right? Yeah. It's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, like I say, it's probably a little bit of a sore spot doing any business with them. But if the Minnesota Vikings come calling and say, we want to move up, to nine because either somebody fell or Dallas Turner is a little bit closer than they think or one of those guys that you feel at nine could make an impact on the Bears they come calling about them and they're willing to offer you a first and a second round pick swap first which you give you a second however the deal works out are you making a intra-division trade with a a team that you're uh, knowing you're sending them a player that you're going to have to see twice a year. Yeah, I think it just depends on what value you're getting back. I mean, that's with any trade. You know what I mean? It's it's what am I giving up compared to the value that I'm getting? Now, if they want to move up and say, hey, we, you know, I'll give you the ninth pick. We'll give you Justin Jefferson. You know what I mean? Like, hey. <laughs> okay. All right. I love it. I love it. We you know just what I'm saying? Like, all of them. Hey, you know what I mean? I don't know. But I just feel like I don't. I don't think that – yeah, you're, you're looking at an interdivision, you know, 
you're trading with a team within your division and you're possibly going to give them a player that could hurt you. But at the same time, you're going to create more opportunities to get a player that can hurt them. So it's give and take. Um, it just depends on what they're offering compared to what you're giving up and, yeah. and how far are you moving down? You know what I'm saying? Like I just, well, they got two. The, the interesting part about them now, listen, if they're giving up both first round picks, I'm here for it. But yeah, uh, yeah. they they probably would not. I would assume that they would not. But they've got 11, and then they've got 23 yeah. um, from uh, Cleveland that goes to them mm -hmm. this year as well. So they got a couple bites at the apple already. I I always have a tough time. Now it may be the fan in me, but I just I have a tough time thinking that any GM coach wants to have something that could be on their resume as not only did you give up this, like imagine if right, we pass on CJ Stroud, but CJ Stroud goes to the Packers. Yeah. Or we pass on CJ Stroud, but CJ Stroud goes to the Vikings. Now it's like, not only did you pass on CJ Stroud, but he trying to kick your butt twice a year. Right, right. Like but, my God, by the way, CJ Stroud oh, just man. got a that? dog. Man. I don't know if Nico anybody Ryan. ever saw that. My God. Hey, Nico Ryan's is not playing with you, man. He I love that, though. No. I he love not playing with y'all. No, I love organizations that go, what you did this year was amazing. Yeah, but now, the, let's make sure you can do it again next year because they figured out how you and Tank Dale work a little bit. We need to figure out how we can make that keep working while adding something to it. Like so many people, I swear, every time I look at uh, uh, RG3, or not RG3, who take that back. Uh, every time I look at Lamar Jackson, like to me, the first five years of his career was just like, hey, man, figure it out. <laughs> yeah. And I think, I think too, like, don't get me wrong, like, I'm, I'm CJ is phenomenal. Obviously, he had a great season, but I think the situation helped him as well. You know, he, he yeah. went through an organization that put together a good scheme. The offensive coordinator understood that he's working with a rookie quarterback, so he's going to make his offense, you know, he's going to make his offense quarterback friendly, or he's going to, you know, he's going to may start off as quarterback friendly. But as I get a feel for the quarterback that I have and what he can handle and what he can process when he's out there on the field, then we'll add to it and build it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. It's making sure that you're going to the right situation in which that 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 offensive staff or that offensive coordinator is going to do everything he can do to highlight your ability, but he's not going to overdo it or he's not going to put you in a situation to where you're you're not going to succeed. And I think the the biggest thing that you can do when dealing with a rookie quarterback, especially coming to a new league, speed of the game is different, is let him feel somewhat comfortable in the pocket. Let him feel like he has time. Yeah. If you, I mean, we've seen that over and over. You talk about RG3. We talked about uh, David Carr. A lot of these rookies, if you if they come in, they're going to have all the promise in the world. But if they come in and they're sitting in that pocket and, hell, they're getting hit, you know, every time they drop back or every other time they drop back, well, guess what? You're taking away their God-given ability because now they're not, they're not able to go through their progressions and dissect the defense. They're trying to figure out where that free rush is coming from, or did my left tackle make, do his job? Am yeah. I going to get hit in the back of the head, or am I going to get hit in the front of the head? Is my right tackle, is he good enough to block that defensive end? Because NFL is about matchups. So, you know, when I'm looking at the game plan as a rookie quarterback and I'm looking at who we're facing this week, damn, can my left tackle block that guy? You yeah. know what I'm saying? And if not – Okay, my offensive co offensive line coach is going to slide that way or do something to take away that guy. But, oh, guess what? <laughs> They've got another guy. They've got an inferior <laughs> guy that's got a one-on-one -on -one matchup now. Are we good enough to block those guys? Yeah. And if we're not, well, then I'm setting my quarterback up for failure because now he can't go through the, he can't do the things that we envision him doing when we drafted him because we have not given him an infrastructure in terms of prote uh, protection to be successful. And that's why, you know, my argument is, is is going to the offensive line or if you're going to, you know, not do that, you, you go to the defensive line because at the same time, it's the same thing for the defense, right? I've got great linebackers. I've got a, you know, a, a foundational piece at corner that we just re-signed in Jalen Johnson. You know what I mean? I've got some, some guys, some young guys that are starting to come into their own. I drafted two rookie corners last year. Secondary would play really well, but I've got, you know, basically one pass rusher that can really create pressure on his own. I need to get pressure for this defense to work. I need more pressure if I want this defense to continue to play at a high level because it's going to have to. We got a rookie quarterback 
we're going to have to lean on this defense to play well in order for we, I, we just can't expect a rookie to come in regardless of how good they say he is or how generational uh, he can be. You can't expect for him to come in and just lead this team offensively or carry this team into the playoffs. No, you're going to have to lean on this defense to win games for you. Yeah, and that's and that's why I think that like when you look at the situation the Bears have built, that's why I've talked about this is one of the best situations I've ever. That's why mm -hmm. I, I'm 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 past you know the Bears traded just feels what are we gonna do like like I yeah, never yeah. had that I I I never had that emotion because I was like oh you're not gonna put Caleb in the same situation yeah like I I was did I want Justin here sure do I think Justin could have thrived with this team sure but you know what I see. Caleb don't have to deal with none of what Justin had to deal with, and I'm sorry that the NFL is not fair. Yeah. I'm sorry that you don't get to get your opportunity to, uh, to to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and go out there and finally they're building around you. It didn't work out. Yeah. But guess what? I, I feel really confident about the next guy that's going to step in here, and it's not because of him. For the first time, like C.J. Stroud, what he did, Joe Burrow, what they did, that's anomalies. Stepping yeah. in, being like, I don't know. We're going to figure it out. And being able to actually just go out there and do it, that's an anomaly. That is here's, different. Here's, here's one thing, too. I'm glad you brought that name up. And I don't want to cut you off, Pat. But Joe Burrow. Talk about how great Joe Burrow is, right? Joe Burrow has been in and out of lineup. Why? Protection. <laughs> got no tackles. <laughs> he got the protection. He's got now, they tried, protection. though. They they tried. They missed though. They they went out and got Orlando Brown Jr. And then who they just add? They just add. But at least yeah, they, yeah. I give them credit. You like hey, you you say you want to give them credit for trying. It didn't work out. Yeah, but they tried. They tried. Yeah, yeah. And you've got a trio of receivers that that are really good. But your quarterback's still getting hit upside his head. Yeah, it's they, who they they signed somebody this off season, uh, to be opposite of Brown. And I can't remember who it was. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't keep up with Bengals free agent signings that close. But like they're still trying to figure out the uh, um, the offensive line because they realize it. <laughs> like at first, and this is what I've always said. To me, you take Joe Burrow, it gets you to a Super Bowl. You lose a Super Bowl, but it gets you to a Super Bowl. Right. If you had traded back in that same draft. You could have got some offensive line help, and you still could have got Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert is the next quarterback, I believe, off the board in that draft. Yeah. Like, there's still – not to say – now, Burrow was the clear-cut best guy. He was the Caleb Williams. But Justin Herbert, not a bad option if I also got a right or a left tackle that can actually block for me. Yeah, I mean, now that Joe Burrow great. gets you to a bowl, hard to get to a bowl. Um but he may not survive long enough. I said this after the Super Bowl, like even watching him deal with being sacked and stuff like that during the Super Bowl. I, I talked about this on the breeze right after the Super Bowl happened that year. I said, he's in danger of being Dan Marino. He's in real danger of being Dan Marino. Now, Dan Marino, much more healthy to this point, right? Better team uh, uh, or better offensive line in front of him. But when you're talking about the modern NFL getting back to Super Bowls consistently, you don't do that without the trenches. It's amazing to me that he got to the Super Bowl with without the trenches. Yeah, and and like you know, with when you when you put together a Super Bowl team, well, guess what? All the other teams want to pick from that roster because now they I've got a guy that had success and went to the Super Bowl. We need that safety because he went to the Super Bowl. You know, we need that receiver now because he went to the Super Bowl. And guess what? Those players they now want to get paid, and you you can't keep all of those guys in the. And that team that made the Super Bowl, like I said before, there were guys on that roster who, oh, who, who wasn't a first. Second, it was Trent third, Brown, by the way. It was Trent, Trent Brown. Brown. They signed Trent Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They try it. They're trying. Like, and, and like we were talking about, Pat, there were there like those Super Bowl rosters, right? Yeah. There are guys on that roster who weren't drafted in the first, second, or third, or fourth round, right? There were guys that were late additions that just blossomed and developed into being, you know, key pieces that help you you know, get, get to that Super Bowl. Yeah. And that's why you, you know, it's every pick matters. Every transact, every transaction matters, whether you're undrafted free agent or not. Like, I mean, there's guys that, that that's going to be on your roster through your evaluation. That's that you're going to have to count on, but it, yeah. it's going to start with the trenches. You got to build it from the inside out. And 
You know, I, the Bears, like, the good thing is the Bears addressed receiver. They got Keenan Allen in the offseason. Am I saying that's it? No, because long term, how much longer is Keenan Allen going to play? That's the argument. Well, yeah, you got it, but he's older. He had his best season last year, but he's older. I get it, right? I get it. But at the same time, if I have my foundation set, right, then I can build that house. I can build the framework on that foundation. If that foundation ain't set and you try to put that frame up, well, sh- that is going to fall. It's going to fail. It's not supported. And that's yeah. whether it's on the offensive side or defensive line, on defensive side, right? This defense, the foundation of this defense is getting pressure with that front four. So if I'm not addressing that, right, I've got my my edge in Montez, right, and I'm hoping that my, my two rookies that I invested in last year, drafting those two rookies, Dexter and Pickens, I hope they develop and take the next step. But now I've got to address that other side because right now, you know, you just have Demarcus Walker. Uh, we talked about Robinson, but you, you know, and Gakwe not coming back. He only had four sacks. He got hurt. You know what I mean? But it's I need somebody on that other side that can really command attention of an of of the of the offense that we're playing. And I that's have a where chance on your knee to see if you can get him cheap, right? Because I mean, he's he's still out there. It's a broken. I don't know. Did you did you break a bone during your football time? Is it easier coming back from a broken bone than a than a a ligament or a tendon injury? I guess. Yeah, I would say so. You know, yeah. it's, it's, I mean, it, it just depends. Like you know, you look at that as the explosion, the first step. Is that still there? You know, what I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's a huge difference. So, you know, I, the trenches is, is where I'm at. Whether it's I, I'd be excited whether it's on the offensive side or the defensive side. You know, yes, you 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 tried to address it, bringing in a lot of different guys. Uh, in free agency um, in terms of, you know, on the offensive line, but we haven't really done nothing on the defensive, on the defensive line either. Yeah, yeah, EO bringing up a great point here from the producer boots that bones fully reheal, ligaments and tendons never fully do. Yeah, like I'd, mm-hmm. I'd, be, I'd be fine bringing back your knee and say, because of what we saw, right? It is, yeah. he's a part of that. He's a part of the pressure we saw opposite yeah. Montez Sweat before he ends up getting hurt. And he, it's probably the best that we saw of him. I Like, yes, I know he's not going to – he's not stopping nobody in a run. I'm sorry. They can run right at him all day. <laughs> right? I mean, it is what it is. You yeah. got to figure that out. But as far as, like, pass rushing downs, like, again, last year was his worst season. You're not going to find a better pass rusher over the 10 years for that price range. I mean, you're probably getting him in here. We signed him last year for 10 mil mm-hmm. off of an injury – I would say what you're knocking three million off of that. You're probably getting them in here seven, eight million. I don't think people were beating down the door last year. They're mm-hmm. certainly not going to be beating down the door off of a broken ankle injury. But it's the thing too, and you look at it right. We talk about depth in the offensive line. Let's look at the depth, right? So, and I don't want this to happen. I don't even want to say it, but let's say and I'm going to mention his name because it's bad luck, and I'm a very superstitious person. So let's All say right. your best pass rusher is not in the lineup, right? He's some, you know, he. He's not in the lineup, right? Yeah. And now you're relying on, you know, Dexter or Pickens, like we talked about. You know, hopefully they take the next step. But you've got Demarcus Walker, Dominique Robinson, Khalid Kareem. You just signed Jacob Martin. And that's that's what you got to get to the quarterback. <laughs> it sounded so gross when you said it. Like yeah, I'm that. just saying. That's, that's, what, that's the reality, though. That's the reality. But do we see, do we see, right? Because D Walk's a guy that could play inside, he could play outside. Do we see D Walk go back to playing the outside and we see him become the seven sack guy again because there's sweat, right? Like, I think that to me, Mm -hmm. everything that we see, I feel better about the defensive line. Not to say you don't need to address it, um, not to say you don't need to address that other edge, but I think that Ryan Poles could sit there and make the argument that, well, you know, when he showed up, he got better. When he showed up, he got better. When he showed up, he got better. And he was only here six games. Well, so if he's it. here the entire season, does that mean he's better the entire year? Yeah. Well, look at look at it like this, right? I like D Walk. I like Demarcus Walker. Three and a half sacks last year. Yeah. Whether you got whether you got him before sweat, after sweat, you only had three and a half sacks. Production based business. Okay. Look at the teams in this league you know, the top tier teams. And I'll talk about one in particular because they consistently win year in and year out. 49ers. What do they do with the draft every year? It seems like they're drafting the defensive linemen, right? Oh, yeah. 
I mean, you see what I'm saying? So they're going to solidify that infrastructure. They're going to get to the quarterback and they're going to protect their quarterback, right? Whether they're protecting him with the offensive line or protecting him with a scheme, right? They're doing both because they got a great scheme and they've got a good offensive lineman that can protect the quarterback. So we take a Mr. Irrelevant and Purdy and he can be successful because we have the infrastructure around him, right? We have an offensive line. And we've got a good scheme, and I've got good pieces around him to make him successful. But how do they build it? They build it on the interior. They built it through the offensive line, and they also built it. They built their defensive line. So now you have a defense that you can win games with, but now you also have the infrastructure for a quarterback to come in and be successful. Yeah. Hey, listen, I, I think they're in a great position. I think that, uh, again, when we talk about this draft, like whatever ads you make, I, I'm not mad at any of them. I'm, right, just, right, I'm really not. Like, I think th there are guys that I would love. I The only thing that I would love to see the Bears do is if you can trade back from nine, get as much capital as possible because if I got the 14th, let's say you make the trade with the Saints, I got the 14th overall pick. Jared Verse may still be there at 14. Yeah. I get Jared Verse, Verse at 14. Now I got the 45th overall pick. Uh, I missed out on uh, all of these great wide receivers. I got Xavier Worthy, who's not only – who somebody somebody said this in the breeze chat, and I thought it was the greatest way to explain the difference in Worthy. He's not a fast wide receiver. He's a wide receiver that's really fast. Yeah. And that, to me, like like normally when you see the 4 to one guy, he's going to be like, he's going to be a heck of a kickoff returner. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like you rarely see the like those guys with that speed and be like, yeah, no, he could play wide receiver. He could do more than just like, yeah, it's it's a question take it of, down the field. Exactly, is it one trick pony? Is all he going to run is a go route? You know, can he run the whole route tree? You know what I'm saying? And that's and that's what he can do. You know, you yeah. saw him, you see him at Texas. He was their big play guy, and he was a big play guy not just because of his speed, is because he could run the route tree. He can get separation at receiver, not just because of his speed, because of, because of his route running ability. So that's why, you know, he's such a hot commodity. You have a guy who has that, you know, all time speed, but he also has the ability to excel at an elite level uh, playing the receiver position. Yeah. So I think that, you know, I, I wouldn't be mad either if, if, if there was a way to trade, like you said, if, if it, if it can happen, it can happen. Options are there, man. Yeah. Options are there. And I, I love that. That's what I love about Ryan Poles. I haven't felt like my back's against the wall for more than a couple weeks before we got, like, Keenan Allen. And then I was just like, oh, okay, no, our back's not against the wall. I was like, we got to take a receiver. We have no receivers. And it was like, oh, we got a really freaking good receiver, y'all. I don't know if y'all know this or not. So yeah. Yeah. we'll see what Ryan Poles ends up doing. Let us know what you guys would end up doing in the comments below. I think there's a lot to be said for the conversation that we had here for the options and uh, trade ups, trade downs, all of that. Uh, let us know in the comments below for Jason McKee. I'm Pat, the designer back at it again. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page, leave a five star review. Y'all know what to do. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear down and uh, Ryan, keep cooking, baby.